a very good morning to you. It is 3rd of August. It is a Thursday. I'm not really sure if I should, well, I'm not really sure how I feel actually, not how I should feel. Um, my little Christopher went back to school this morning and I took him, I dropped him off at half past eight and I wasn't sure if I, I don't know, I had such mixed feelings about it because it, last week I kept saying, oh yay, they're going back to school and, and we get, well, sort of our freedom back a little bit. But um, when I dropped him off this morning, I felt really, really sad that um, he's going back to school. So, um, yeah, I'm really going to be looking forward to this afternoon picking him up and he's probably going to tell me all about it, what uh, his classmates done over the summer. So quite um, looking forward to catch up with him later on. Right, today we're going to be doing tubular netting. This is one of my favourite, all-time favourite stitches. I um, have tried it with different beads. I tried it with um, different type of beads, different size of beads. We, um, we did a graduated one before, um, which I want to do as another Facebook Live later on. So first let's master sort of the basic steps of it and then we can um, sort of graduate and... Um, in sizes up and down as we go along. Um, let me just quickly say good morning. Good morning, Edward, GT, Jan, Teresa, Mercia, Leslie. I have got Molly here with me, um, so she will be, she will give a shout out if you got a question. Uh, morning, Ruth, Annie, Brenda, Paula, Sharon, uh, Mina, Chef, Diane, Lucy, Alison. Seema, I hope I said your name right. Um, so what, a, what a lovely name. Morning, Camille, Carol, Charlotte, Linny, Alison, Seba, Lucy, Nita. I hope Nita, Nita Patel. I, ho I hope I said your name right. That's a lovely name as well. Um, morning, Diane, Sheila, Susan. Right, there's so many lovelies here. I'm going to turn you down on the mat and I'm going to show you the samples straight away because. They are so, so lovely. So I um, I made a couple of bracelets up, one in just in a single color, um, as I was working at the ends. And this is actually quite good for you to see because this is the progress. When I design something, how I sort of, I just sit down and play with them and make all the, let me just pop myself in a corner here so you can see me as well, um, make up all the different variations. So this was, um, I made this a single color one up first and then I started thinking that um, it does look really good. The, the weave itself is beautiful. How about if I add another couple of colors to it and then I came up with this one where I added three different colors and as you go along and I'm going to be showing with the stitches as you sort of um, tu making your tubular um, a stitch spiraling up you're going to be creating this really lovely pattern and the crystals are just so so sparkly and a really nice and comfortable way to wear it however what i want to show you quickly the ends that um how neat you can do the ends on this so usually when we do a spiral stitch or if you do like the russian spiral um, I should have bought one up actually, I didn't. Um, we work the ends into a point and then we attach it to the loop on the clasp. Now with this stitch, you can, I'll show you the clasp on its own, um, you can make these loops disappear inside your tubular netting. How neat is that? I just really love it. I think it looks like really, um, you know, clean and like, looks like very professional and disappears when you wear it. And with the magnetic clasp, it's so easy to put on and to take off. And because the loops are inside the tube, I don't think it's, it doesn't matter where you wear your clasp, if you wear it on the bottom or if you wear it on the top, because it just looks like a decorative bead um, in the middle of your weave. So I, I do really love it. But um, this was the working at progress, and you can see it was quite bobbly at the end. And then to the final one to work out all the counts and the numbers of seed beads we need to use at the top um, becomes so much neater. But that's how anything works. Any, any, any kits or anything we put together, that's how we sort of keep working at it until we're 100% happy with it. Uh, Lena has a question. Yeah. Is there instructions in the kit? Right, there's the instructions in the kit. So what we did is we put the, I'm going to show you all the colours. We got 10 or 11 colours, I think so. I, I, I've taken home 
because I was working from home yesterday, I'd taken home about eight, 16, 18 colours to play with. And in Dan Simon came home last night and he said, well, you can't really have that many colours. You need to really decide on your favourites. And I said that I had 11 favourites, <laughs> as, as you would. 10, 10 favourites. So I hope... Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I've got ten here. I just I just looked at it for a second and I panicked. Have I got have I not got one? But now I got all ten of them. Right, so this one is your teal colorway. Each one of the kits is gonna come with three different strands of a crystal beads. And let me just get one out for you here. The crystal strands are quite long. Um, you get a bag of size 11 seed beads, a bag of size 15 seed beads. Now, we're not going to be going back through the size 15 much. We just sort of, that's the middle of your netting. And I'm going to show you the difference because I, where's my sample disappeared? Oh, here. I got a bigger table here, but then I just filled it up. So 11 versus 15. Let me just get these out of the way for a second. So I tried it just to do with size 11s first and, and the result was sort of, it was nice, but it's not as flexible and it wasn't as neat as I really want it to be because I think the size 11s are overpowering those um, three millimeter crystals as well and I wanted because it's a tubular netting don't forget what you're creating is still about seven eight millimeter in size um, then I tried it with the 15s and I think um, the 15s really do justice um, to the stitch itself but you're not going to be going backwards and forwards on the 15s you're going to be you're going to be having an 11 in there so 11 just using 11s and using 15s as well you can see what a difference does it make so, going back to the contents of the kit, you get a bag of 11, you get a bag of 15, and you get three different colors of these crystals. Now, each one of these crystal strands are quite long. They, they the three millimeter um, ones we have. They have, each color have about 200 crystals on. And this is, this bracelet, which is my size, this is using all of one color up. So it will make you, one colour will make you quite a large bracelet because you know I like, I've got quite a large wrist and I, I do like to wear my bracelet loose as well. So the kit will make you three bracelets in single colour or you can make the multicolour version. Now if you don't want bracelets you can obviously, you can just continue your um, stitching and turn it into a necklace because it would make a really nice necklace as well. You also get three different, three, not different, three pieces of clasps in your kit and um, these really nice magnetic ones they the 12 millimeter one they're very nice and strong um, so it's, everything is there the only thing you need to add as an extra is your thread and needle because to keep the cost down we wanted to um, you know lo loads of you got thread and needle and if you if you bought a bobbin or two before there is 70 meters of thread on there you're not going to use the up with, with one one or two projects you're going to need quite a few um, to use your thread up so the thread and needles extra instructions come with the kit uh, printed out pdf is because it's brand new i only finished the pdf yesterday and we haven't got it available as a download maybe later on some point we will but at the moment it comes with the beads so what you're paying for is the price of the beads for the kids and your instructions are well free coming free with your little mini bundle Carol has a question. The yep. purchase the bundle of crystal and three beads the snake bracelet, would it be okay to use the list and just add 11? The bundle of the snake bracelet, they are 4mm crystals and they are size 11 seed beads. These are 3mm crystals, so bent down in size a little bit. About well, one millimeter. Um, you can do it with 4mm, but I think the count of the seed beads in between is going to be different for the, what, what hammer you have to pick up. But let's, I mean, let me get started on the stitch and it will all make perfect sense to you. Right, so color wise quickly, you all seen the lovely teal. Um, well, I made this one up into the base, so you know teal is my favorite and the blues. I also love this one. This is called Sea Foam Green. Now this one, we got a couple of different colors of the 15s are different from the 11s, so they really do stand out. And we got this lovely, um, sort of tealy, greeny colors of um, 
crystals in there. I just grabbed the kit. Um, one of them is more tealy, the other two is more sort of um, a sagey and, and a dark greeny color. But when you put them together, again, they create a, a, a blend of colors. I really like this one. I'm going to show you when we get to how to do all three colors with that one. This is the Tanzanite. Tanzanite is your purples. I love, love, love this one as well. Um, this is very much of my colors. I hope it comes all right on the screen. Obviously, we've got an olive green for Sarah <laughs> because she lo loves her um, olive colors. So I, I created an olive green color. And we have a, a navy blue. Now, the navy blue has got a light blue in there as well. I'm sorry, coming up quite dark on the screen, but it's a really lovely color. This is perfect with jeans and um, lighter and darker blue tops. Um, on the topic of blue, I have created a sapphire blue, which is a very light blue. Um, this is probably more sort of day wear, and your navy blue is more of a night wear. Um, this is a much brighter color. We have got a pink with the autumn rainbow crystals as well in there. I love this one as well. Oh, the amethyst. Amethyst is a really nice color again. I love this one as well because you got one which has got sort of a hint of a gray in there. You got a amethyst AB and a sort of half rainbow in there and just I think they go together perfectly. Oh, this one is the leather. I love this color. So this is your grays and very muted sort of um, beige colors um, going together. A tiny bit of gold in there, but this more sort of gray color. Bracelets like this are great because they go with everything pretty much. You know, whatever you have in your wardrobe, you can wear it with them. And this is the last color I have, the darker brown. What is that work color variation called, Molly? Uh, <laughs> we have renamed and renamed them the last <laughs> week. We went backwards and forwards and I forgot. Yeah, no. So is this the leather and what's the gray one called then? There is two there. Uh, that one didn't come there. So that one would have been the black diamond. Um, <laughs> could be. Have a, um, no, that one is the leather. This one is the leather. I'm just looking on the website myself on the screen. And this darker one, it could have been the black diamond, isn't it? it be, yeah. <laughs> so Simon taking off the wrong one. Oopsie. Here, is there anything else what I haven't mentioned? No. Can, we, can you put this option back on then, please? Put black diamond. The black diamond. Yeah. Yes. So Molly's going to sort that out. Right. Um, let's get back. So very quickly, just show you on the screen. Um, if you, on the left-hand side or on the top of the categories, the fourth one is Facebook tutorials, today's tubular netting, and all the options in there. And Molly's just going to pop the black diamond in there for you. They're all different prices because this is how much is the beads themselves added up. It's not, um, we didn't do a generic price, it's just how much they added all up and um, we went with that price. Right, I'm going to show you the stitches stitch itself very very easy I'm gonna I'm just quickly sort of clearing these away I left a really long um, tails uh, threads on these little um, color swatches I call them because I will finish them off later on as bracelets right the, what color do you want me to show let's do this one this lovely tanzanite with the gray black diamond is now live. <laughs> the black diamond is live Molly's saying <laughs> Um, and just saying, please tell me I'm not the only one that wants all the colors. Oh, Angela, I like when I go, when I do colors home and Simon always tells me that, um, you know, why do I have to like play with so many different colors? Why can I just have like one or two favorites and that's it? Uh, but I can't. I think that's the, that's the beauty of it. That's half the fun to sort of play with all the colors. So I got size 11s and size 15s and I'm just gonna bring them down the corner there so they march towards me. And I'm gonna take some of these lovely crystals off. 
of my strand and just pop it in the middle and then I'll just I need about to do with my thread. I put everything just right there. Oh there is right in front of me. Silly me. My things are keep I don't know what's up with me today. Things are keep disappearing from in front of me that um I swear I put there. Right, I'm going to thread the needle very quickly. I'm just taking that end through. This is always that hold your breath moment. And I often, when we are on live TV or, or even, well, I'm, I'm talking right now, but um, you kind of hold your breath when you're trying to thread a needle. Right, so I this is, I'm going to leave the bobbin on because you can continue your work to the other direction later on so in, you don't have to join a new thread in although it's quite easy to join a thread in and i have got a couple of arm span of thread doubled over needle in the middle and i can move my needle down as i go later on right to start with i'm going to show you with one color so it doesn't matter um what where you pick them up because we, I'm just going to show you the stitch with one color and then I'm going to show you how to bend the colors, blend, not bend, <laughs> the colors themselves. So I picked up a pattern of one seed bead, size 11, three millimeter crystal, size 11, three millimeter crystal, size 11, three millimeter crystal. And I'm going to take this all the way down. And the stitch itself really easy because you're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Now I'm going to go through all of my beads from the tail end to my working end to form a nice little circle. And I like to work away from my tail. So I'm going to go through the next, I'm going to write back on my stuff, I'm going to go through the next seed bead, crystal seed bead and pull this up so I can have a really nice a tight pull on my bits here. I'm just move these crystals because I think I'm constantly going to ping them. Right, so there is two steps for tubular netting. In one step you're adding your loops of seed beads and the second step you're adding your crystals. So here, because we got our crystals and we can see one size 11 seed bead in between um, we're going to be adding our seed bead loops next you have to pick up the following pattern so i'm going to pick up two size 15 one 11 and another two size 15 onto my needle Please what size needle is um, i'm working with a size 10 needle and super long size d because you don't have to go back um, through the size 15s a lot um, we're just pretty much just picking them up. Um, you can get away with using a thicker thread and larger needle. Right, so it, it doesn't matter if you want to work in clockwise or if I turn it around, I can work anti-clockwise. It's depending your left or right hander or what way is more is better for you to work with. I always like to work away from myself, so I'm going to work anti-clockwise, but this is when sort of you decide what way you're going to go. Right, so I'm working anti-clockwise. As I'm coming out of this seed bead, I'm going to miss, I'm just bring this up, I'm going to mix the crystal and I'm just going to come through the next seed bead on my circle and pull my beads up. So all I did, I just added a little loop to the, on the top of my crystal. Andrew said, could I use a flat spine needle? Um, quite possibly, because that you're only going through the 11s. And I'm going to repeat the same thing again. So I'm picking up two size 15s, one 11, two size 15. Although I'm not sure if the size 15s will fit through the big eye needle. Have I got a big eye needle down there, hon? Oh my. It had to be about change and rearrange here. Um, Again, I'm going to miss the crystal and go through the size 11. Just like that and pull this up nice and tight. So I've got seed beads around my, my second crystal as well. 
And I'm going to repeat the same thing for the third time. <laughs> yes. Will you try if you can put your size 15 seed beads? You might need to take the string out because that's quite thick. Molly, she's going to try it for you. Right, two size 15, one 11, and another two size 15. And I'm going to go through the last size 11. So I will have seed beads around the la last crystal as well. And you need to step up to be able to... Let's go through it. Yeah, Molly tried it, yes. <laughs> So quite possibly all right with a big eye needle with a size 15. Right, so I went, I got a little loop around every single one of those crystals and now I need to step up to be able to add my next row, which will be crystals. So I'm just going to go through the first two size 15s and the size 11 at the top to get to the very top point of my little triangle here if you wish and then I'm just going to pick up crystals in this round so I'm going to pick up one three millimeter crystal I'm going to miss the two size 15 size 11 and two size 15 and go through the next size of 11 the very tip of my pattern there and pull this up and, and it's pulling so to the pattern at this point is going to start to pull in on itself. Repeat the same thing again. Missing two size 15, one 11, two size 15. Just going through the next tip and pulling this tight. And finally, I'm adding the last crystal. Again, missing those seed beads, 11, 15s, 11s, 15s. And just going through the tip just there. And now we are back, I'll just pull this up nice and tight. Now we are back in the position where we were moments ago when we just had our three crystals and size 11 seed beads between our crystals. So we're going to pick up two 15s and 11 and two 15s and go through the next 11 miss the crystal and just go through the 11 and that's how easy it is just going to go on and just wrap the end around so i can hold on it more solid for you you're going to repeat the same steps again i'm just going to do a couple of rows and then i'll show you how to blend the three colors i'm just pulling it up if you are unsure, if you learn just learning the stitch, just try it with one color, go all the way through, or I'm just gonna come back through now. I need to step up and quite um but more often what I do, so you have to go through the last size eleven, and before I pull that through, I usually I run into my first loop as well, just to make life a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going through the last size 11 and I'm doing the step up beads but I need to do exactly the same time. Um, Lorna is asking are the crystals in the same size as in a staking snow? Lovely, these are 3mm crystals so they are a little bit smaller. If you are still making about an 8mm netted cord but um, if you use four millimeter, the counts will be different between your crystals. Sarah's got something coming up with the four millimeter crystal bundle soon. And I'm just adding the crystals in the next round and just going through the size 11 seed beads. And then we are back again to the same position we were adding the loops on the end. And that's really how easy it is to do your stitch. Now, when you come to the other side and you want to lengthen it this way, you just take more length of your bobbin and carry on that way. Now, let me just move this out of the way and I'm going to show you how to do the three colors or how to... 
identify easily which color is the next one you have to do. I love these little scoops, these little triangle scoops. I use them all the time because it's so easy just to scoop up the beads and then move them along. So I'm going to show you the sea foam. I got this one out of the bag. Now, when you're using three different colors of crystals, um, I always like sort of put them before I start, I put them in sort of A pattern. Let's call them A, B and C color. Um, depending on um, how you want to blend them, but because you're only using three colors, the color groups is going to be right next to each other, whichever way you go. So if you're using three colors, it doesn't really matter if I have this one first or that color first and um, it's gonna end up you're gonna have exactly the same results right very quickly just have a yeah so are you doing more bundles to shadow and snake stitch really? um we got the shadow and the rainbow for the snake stitch um have to have a look um i last downstairs that um see because we did have more stock of the crystals but um, I'm not sure I think Simon added extra stock up, up on there already I don't know how much of what, what we got left right so doing the three colors I'm just at the stage when I'm picking up my two size 15 this is the lovely sea foam color size 11 and size 15 and the, here because the, the size 11 is slightly different color Perhaps you can um, see it better as well. And I'm just going to add my loops onto the side very quickly. And as you can see, it's a really nice and easy relaxing stitch because no matter what you do, you know that what you need to go or what way, what's your next step is going to be. Row, then row. What next stage? I'm on a small screen and the phone went blank. Oh, no. Right, so you got two steps. If you just joined us, we are doing tubular netting and there is only two steps to it. So you pick up your first row, which is going to be a size 11 seed bead crystal, size 11 seed bead crystal, size 11 seed bead crystal, size 11 seed bead crystal. So you have three in the row and you add your loops to the side. And in one, let me just get, I'm just going to add these crystals very quickly in so I get to the same sort of step. So when you're adding your, when you, after you did your base row, you make it into a circle. So you're going to go through all your beads from the tail end to the end um, of what you're working on to form a little circle. And you're going to end up seeing what you just see right here. So you've got crystal seed bead, crystal seed bead, crystal. And you're going to have to add your loops to be able to add further beads. So I'm picking up two size 15, a size 11, two size 15. I'm going to ignore the crystal and going to go through the next size 11 seed bead on the pattern and pull that up. Then I'm going to slightly turn my work, pick up another two size 15, size 11 and another two size 15s and go through the next size 11 on my row. Sort of round, not really row, because when you refer to row, you sort of think you're going backwards and forwards, back and forwards. And here you're really going in round, so I'm working an anti clockwise motion here. Let's get a couple of balance here so I don't have to keep moving my hands. So, my last set of two 15s, 11s, 15, I'm going to go through the last size 11 on my base row, and in the same sort of stitching I'm going to go through the two size 15 and the size 11 
on my first ever loop to be into the position so I can add the crystals straight away and pull this up nice and tight. And as you can see, we created little loops on the top of our sort of crystals. And now we're going to be adding our crystals in the next row. So there's two different rows. One row you add your seed bead loops and in the next row you add your crystals. Now here we're working with three different crystals and how you get the really nice spiral pattern of crystals. You always add the color of the crystals, you're right above it. So as you can see my tail end is right here and I'm above this darker green crystal. So I'm going to pick up one of those and go through the next tip of the triangle size 11 seed bead and pull this up tight. Now I'm above the tealy color, so I'm going to pick up one of those and go through the next size 11 sort of the tip of the triangle and only one color left which is this lovely soft green and again, I'm just going to go through the size 11 there. And now we are back in the position where we are just adding our loop. Um, Sharon is saying, this, this looks so nice, make me wish I wore bracelets. Right, so you don't have to have them as bracelets because you can make, well, the kit or uh, will make you three bracelets, but you don't have to have three bracelets. You can carry on and continue and you can turn it into a necklace. It's entirely up to you. I usually put together bracelet kits this way because I... I will wear more bracelets than necklaces more often, but um, I usually put bracelet kits together so it will make either three bracelets or you can make a long necklace or a shorter sort of a choker type necklace and another bracelet with it. Um, the choice is yours because we're all different. We all prefer different things. I've just got a naughty thread here. Let's just unloop it. Uh, a few people have said it looks complicated, it's made it look very easy, so definitely try it. Aww, I'm glad. It is really easy. Once you get your head around that you're doing two different rows. So in one row you're adding your seed bead loops and on the second row you're adding your crystals. And that's it, really. Make sure you keep a nice and tight tension. Yeah, try it with pearls as well. If you do any of them, please put uh, or make anything up, pop a picture up so we can all see it in one of the handmade groups. I'm just going back and tightening this up as I was pulling that knot undone. This has come a little bit loose. So to tighten it up, you always sort of need to pull on the loop you just added before and then pull on your end so it tightens right up. Now because you're going in a tubular motion at one point you are going to get, and I'm just going to turn the camera on me, you're going to get that these little loops are keep forming on your thread. So what you need to do is to hold your needle up, and I'm just holding my thread just below my needle, so I'm not putting the stress on the needle, and let your work dangle down in front of you. And then I take my index finger and thumb and just put sort of pressing down with the end of my nail on my thread and I'm just pulling it down just like that and when you get to the bottom of it you can see that your work is starts to spin and that means because you were working in a tubular motion you twisted your thread up and then when you go back and you start doing your um, stitching again hopefully you're not going to have any problem with your thread twisting at all. So that is just sort of a quick tip for you, top tip, quick top tip to how to solve your thread um, keep knotting up. Right, so I'm just going to step up and make sure I'm coming out of the size 11 seed bead and I'm at the position to add my crystals as well. It relatively grows quick, um, probably a bracelet will take me about two two and a half hours to make. 
although you know you are working with smaller beads at very and your pattern is, is what you create and your netting is smaller i think it, i think it's a really lovely relaxing pattern very pleasing to the eye uh, denise is asked how do you also join if you cut too short a piece Right, so if you run out of thread, what I normally do, I work my my I would work this thread off first and then weave a new thread in. Now I always do in this position when you see the crystals right at the top, because it doesn't matter what size eleven you're coming out of when you start doing your loops for the next round and um it just makes life easier. I like to work when I do any spirals or any sort of necklaces or, or bracelets. I like to always work with clean threads, which means I kind of work my tail ends off straight away. So as I go along, I don't have loads of threads sticking out everywhere in my bracelet because there's nothing worse. When you make a bracelet, or, or it's probably more for necklaces because with bracelet you can work um, with the different threads. But... Um, with necklaces obviously you need quite a lot of thread and there's nothing worse when you made a bracelet or a necklace up and um, you still have to sit there another half an hour or an hour working all your tail bits off and making sure you know you do your one half hitch knots and taking your thread back in your thread bars um because when i when i finish a bracelet and i touch the class i just sort of in my mind I'm finished and I want to start wearing it right so I'm adding my crystals because I'm working with three crystals my tail is coming at here just up not tail my working thread is coming at just above the darkest crystal so that's the one I need to pick up and I'm jumping to the next size 11 in the next corner now I'm above this lovely tealy color so that's the one I need to pick up and back to this corner and I need to pick up this lovely lighter green color. If you're just using one color crystal then it doesn't really matter. Now there is a way to have to keep your um, tension even tighter so when you get to this position sometimes I go through an extra crystal and an extra seed bead and just pull that tight and that sort of third of a circle extra thread I do there just makes my work a bit more solid, a bit more tighter, because you can really pull on your thread um, then and tighten up your work. But the fluidity, what you get with the stitch itself, it's quite, I don't it's really nice, it's quite bendy. I'll show you in a finished sample just in one sec. I think you, does everybody get the stitch? You're doing the same thing over and over again, one, step you adding your loops and the next step you're adding your crystals oops 11 is there susan said it'd be lovely in red green and gold for christmas oh yes definitely you should do all sorts of different variations and don't forget these are three millimeter crystals there is no reason why you couldn't mix the three millimeter crystals with the three millimeter pearls so you can even have like a crystal, pearl crystal um, sort of spiral going up through your netting or, you know, it's your design, is whatever you like. Yeah. That's, oh look, I just picked up the seed beads and I was on a crystal row. I'm just talking so much. This is the thing, this is why I always say I like to organize myself. So like in the six stitch as well, when we're using three different colors of crystals, I like to sort of put my colors out in a pattern how I need to pick them up because, you know, the kids always come in and want something or the phone rings and I forget which color I um, need to pick up. So I do like to put myself in a bit of a pattern and with the tail, tail ends as well, I like to be sort of prepared and sewn up, sewn, sewn it off. So don't forget the little kits on the website, um, 11 of them we have. I will show you the colors again at the end. Um, 
there's three strands of crystals and these crystals are extra long they're really good quality they're three millimeter in size um, there's about 200 crystals on each strand so you get either a full bracelet out of one color or you can do like a, a, a tri-color bracelet or necklace if you wish you can just keep continue building your length so they don't just have to be bracelets just because I say they are bracelets, they don't have to be bracelets. You can continue and turn into a necklace. I suppose, as I said, I think about bracelets more because I do wear bracelets more than necklaces. Because in the summer it's like too hot to wear um, necklaces. And in the winter, it's um, I, I, I love my scarves. So you don't really see without me a scarf, do you Molly? In the winter, I always, I, I like my neck to be warm. Because I, I, I don't know, maybe it's because coming from Hungary, but my grandmother always used to say to me, if your feet, hands and neck warm, you are warm. And that's what, when I was little, she always says to me, is your feet cold? And I would say no, or is your hands cold? And I would say no. And then she would know that, and is your neck cold? And I would say no, then she knows I'm warm. Nice and warm. And in the same, I'm going to the last size 11 here. In the same motion, I'm going to step up so I'm there and able to add my crystals. And that's it. That's how easy it is. You're going to go along round and round, adding your crystals and your. seed beads on two different um, steps. I think it's quite therapeutic as well. I love netting. I love anything to do with netting. You could do so many different um, variations of netting. You could do just sort of a netted base and then add crystals on the top of it. We did um, a bracelet like that or you add the crystals in straight away. There is so many different variations you can do. And in the next step, I'm just adding the loops on. So I think, you know, give it a go. Then once you learn the stitch, you can start experimenting with different colors, different sizes, different number of seed beads. Because if you're using a larger crystals, perhaps all you need to do is add an extra size 15. So instead of picking up two, you would be picking up three, but then if you're using the larger crystals, maybe you want um, very, very picked up size 15, you want to pick up size 11 and use size 8 as your X and beads on the top of your loops. Right, let me just add these crystals and I'll show you how to at the class. Yeah, absolutely you can do that because the class themselves are quite decorative. You can in fact make three bracelets and join them up. So there is one there is two and just join the bracelets up and you're just going to have like a little, I mean this is two bracelets so this is way too small for me, you need a third one but um, you can have this, you know, if you have a third one it's probably going to be down here and just see, so you could do that as well and then you've got a multi-usable bracelet or necklace but the other thing what you can do is to make a bracelet and then just with an extra class make an extender to go to the back so the front of your necklace is going to be nice and netted and what goes to the back um, just attach a string of pearls or a string of the other one, the string of crystals so this is I know this is two different class I picked up a silver one not uh, an antique silver one and just have one strand of crystals or one strand of um, pearls or anything going to the back of your neck and then it's multi-usable because you can use the same 
um, extender piece for different necklaces. So I would do an extender piece, or even you could add chain to it, it doesn't have to be. I would use like you know maybe do like a grayish color or something very neutral color a beige color or like if you wear a lot of tails then do a tail backing and that would go with loads of different necklaces and bracelets so you can extend your bracelets oh thanks Lorna for reminding me that because I actually I do do that all the time because it's much quicker to make up a bracelet than to make up a necklace so I do it's like your little cheat, but it doesn't look like a cheat because it's still going to look like really nice and gorgeous and stunning. But um, you only had to make a bracelet size. And if you later on, if you want to wear it as a bracelet, you can. You got the option there. Just move this some size 11 here. Right, so add the clasp. All you need to do is to add your loop first. You need to stop where just after adding your loops. Now, don't, if you don't remember every single count of seed beads, what we did here, it will be all in the instructions in your kit. And then instead of getting up to the outside of the edge, where we would be adding our crystals, we're gonna stay with these middle seed beads and we're gonna get our clasp go through the loop on the clasp and we're gonna sew backwards and forwards between these little size 11 seed beads in between our crystals securing the clasp right into the middle there just going backwards and forwards Pulling it nice and tight. You can even secure this to the crystals themselves as well. So every so often you could just go through just that last crystal row and go back through the clasp as well. Now it doesn't matter how your thread path is going to be here between the crystals and sewing your end to the seed beads because gonna be going to be covering it up. So if it's not neat, it doesn't really matter. You just have to be secure. So it will hold your bracelet up. I like to do it quite nice and tight. And I'm just going to stick it. The more, I, I like to, you know me, I do like my ends extra secure. And I usually do like one or two extra, like going around in it. Um, because when my children were little, um, when you picked up Christopher, all um, he used to do is pull on your necklace or put on your bracelet straight away. Right, I think I saw it to it probably about seven, eight times, so I think that's going to be strong enough. Right, now I need to get up to the top of my, if you ignore the clasp, you're going to do your normal weave what you were doing before. But we're going to need to extend the adding the crystals to our seed beads for the corners here. We're going to have to extend the crystals because as we're going around, we got the loop in the middle now. The loop of the clasp to cover up. So our next crystal row has to be slightly bigger. So at the same way, when I'm picking up a crystal, I'm going to pick up a size 15 seed beads just to either side of it to make this row slightly a little bit bigger and go through the next corner piece. I'm picking up another one again. I'm picking up size 11s next to my crystals and going through the next corner just like that. I mean, you can stop at any time, you don't have to take your thread right to the top um, it's really a stuff to you just picking up the last colors with a size 15 on either side and I'm gonna go through the last size 11 so you could stop your sort of stitches here I like to take it up one more notch just to sort of cover this extra bit there 
So we need to add an extra row of beads and we need an extra size 11. Now we don't really want to add another sort of loop going all the way to the top, which what I did in this one and it become quite cumbersome and big at the end. I want it nice and neat. So all I really want to do is add another size 11 on the top of the size 11 between my crystals. So I'm going to go through the next 15 crystal 15, pick up a size 11 seed bead and go through the next crystal for size 15 crystal size 15 pull this through make sure it's nice and tight and all we're creating is just adding an extra size 11 on the top there and add a size 11 into all three sides and just pull that through and I'm adding the last one and I'm going to step up as well. This one, so I'm going to my 15, crystal 15. I'm going to step up and go to the first size 11 I added. And pull this tight. And then I'm just going to add a little loop of size 15 at the top really come up to against the base of my class there but this is all in the instruction as well I'm just going to go to the size 11 the one we just added in the previous row make sure this is nice and tight and carry around adding a few more size 15 just as a little decoration at the top and going through the next size 11 which is sort of poking right out pulling it tight and my last few size 15s And I'm going to size 11 and with that you have completed and added your class. Um, I do like to go around sort of a couple of times or, or, or you know just start to weave myself back at the top here and go around my seed beads and crystal beads again here just to reinforce this last two or three rows. Um, of beading there. Now because we're going back through the size 15s again you might need a pair of pliers or your um, scissors to hand because with each of the scissors you have this point on the scissors where they, they two meet and it's just going to help you to grab on your needle and pull it through if you need to so I'm just going to show you what I mean. So if you're and um, this one is actually quite coming through quite easily but if your needle is sort of gets stuck you can always hold your needle just a between that point where your scissor meets hold down on your beads and pull it through and then pull your weave nice and tight just to help you to give you the extra strength to pulling your needle or you can do it with a pair of pliers as well. I like to do it with the back of my scissors because it just gives you a softer pull. And especially if you pull it with um, pliers, you have to pull it parallel because if you put a slight little bend on it, it will bend your needle. But then comes the point that um, if you keep coming going through and it gets to a problem, then just change your size 10 needle to a size 12 needle to work your thread off. Right, I went all the way around the top and now I'm going to move down a couple of rows and just sort of go around here as well and, and then I'm going to work my ends off. That's it, this is going to come in to a bit harder. I'm just going to pull it 
say Yes, so you can do all sorts of different things at the end. When we did like um, we did Russian spiral, we did um, well, we had Russian spiral. We had quite a few of them. Um, we had four different versions. We did um, what are tubular stitches we done lately? There was something else. You always work your end into a point to be connect your clasp on but I think doing it this way you just get such a lovely neat finish at the end um, and it's really nice and decorative as well you sort of hide your loops and hide the mechanics of your bracelet I always like to go around a few times as well and I'm just gonna do a half hitch knot which when I just gonna pop under these two beads here I haven't gone through any of the beads at all I'm going to pull my thread through and you can see this loop is appearing and before this loop disappears I'm going to go through this loop again and pull my thread tight and as, as I'm pulling it tight you can see the little knot that little knot is forming on my thread there and I'm going to repeat this a couple more times just to be extra secure just always moving along through a few beads again I'm going to go under these two beads pull this up before this loop disappears I'm going to go through this loop I did this again I hooked it under and that's it oh what's going on with this naughty thread Naughty Thread Thursday it is today. Right, so I'm just pulling that up, making sure that I'm right next to where I want to be and pull it up nice and tight to form that little knot. Do manipulate the thread what you're pulling as you go along so the knot is going to be between the beads you where exactly you want it to be and I'm just going to take it through a few more beads and just quite simply just cut the end off so I'm pulling up pulling the thread up with one hand with the other hand I got the scissors open and I'm pushing it the, the, the bracelet down or necklace my beadwork down with the scissors and then just snip it and that just lets you to cut it nice and close and the end of the thread will disappear I really do love it because it's really therapeutic quite you know it's a quite simple steps to it um, but put together I think they really form a very nice um, a really really nice pattern let me just get these seed beads out of the way and I'll show you the colorways again in um, real life because I love them but you know me I couldn't just have three color values. I had to have as many as I, as I can get my hand onto so this is the sea foam green which has got sort of greens and tills um, in them as well and all together it makes this really really nice color um, the tail which is obviously the one I finished and I'm going to be wearing um, I love tealy colors, I do wear them quite a lot. And um, this is the bracelet that Sarah, Sarah made me quite, I don't know how many weeks ago it was, she did like a wire wrapped uh, ba bangle bracelets, quite a few weeks. And look, it's quite, it's, it's a aquamarine um, gemstone and it goes quite nicely, just sort of stacked together um, with them. Supilon size D, so it's the thicker one of the Supilons. This is the Sapphire Blue, a very light blue, I love this one as well. But then you've got three different colors of crystals, a couple of seed beads. Like this one, the size 15s are different from the size 11. So some of the kits, I kept them exactly the same color, and some of the other ones, I did them slightly different as well. So you 
get sort of different finishes as well in your bracelets as you go along. So this one, they were a little bit different. If you look at the 10s and night, the size 15s and the size 11s are exactly the same color. So they, they, you can't really, once you make the bracelet up, you can't, it just looks like one continuous thing, but it's two sizes. And this is what, um, adding the size 15s instead of the size 11s that just gives you this flexibility and let me show you in this bigger piece it becomes a really nice fluid piece of uh, stitching if you were doing just with size 11 as you can see um, the pattern will still work but it's not as ample and it's not as nice to sort of bend around I do prefer it with size 15s in there um, this is the pink and it's got the lovely um, mermaid color crystals in there as well. Amethyst, I love amethyst as well. Amethystic colors, sort of your aubergine amethystic colors. This one is leather. What was that one called? Black diamond. Black diamond. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> then you got your black diamond. It's a little bit darker. Again, on the same turn. I love these two because they're sort of your grays, browns in there. But um, they do go with a lot. You can wear them with a lot of different colors. An olive green, and I put this together with Sarah in mind because she loves her olives and browns and greys. And then you've got your navy. It's quite a dark color, um, blue tone as well. So I would say like this is your day wear, this is your night wear. Um, a very lovely navy. Sometimes it's quite hard to sort of make as a jewelry because there's not a lot of um, companies make navy beads and with this one as well and I'll show you the crystals themselves they're here um, so you get like a hematite really nice dark sort of navy color and you get a solid version of it and you get like a see-through version of it and then you get a really light, it's still sort of, it's got a um, sort of a champagne gold or silvery shine on it, but it's a very light blue as well. By mixing the three colors together, you get, I think, the perfect navy combinations. And that's what we did with the seed bits here as well and the crystals. So you've not just one colors, but you've got three colors coming through. And when you're adding three colors together, and probably you can see in this um, tail one the most, that um, because we're using light colors against dark colors, they really make the colors pop up and, and give you that, you know, almost jumping out of the bracelet look because you're using two or three different colors together. So that's why, you know, I do always say that making in one color is great and you learn the stitch and you don't have to think about the colors, but um, adding an extra color, or extra color or two or making it with three colors, it just makes it a little bit more, um, a little bit more professional, I guess, or a little bit more colorful or I don't know. I just, I just like that little bit of extra in there I guess and Judy saying love to see reds together you know that was the reds were the only color but I didn't take home um, the other day to have a play with it and yesterday when I was playing with all the colors and I thought wouldn't it be nice to have like a sort of dark orange light red and dark red that would look really really amazing or oh, reds and black, yes, that we, they would look really good together. But once you master the stitch, and you know, you can use anything what you have in your stash. And these crystals, we do sell them. I think we got about 96 colors or something like that on the website. It's a ridiculous amount of numbers, loads and loads of colors. So you can choose your colors, what you like um, the most, and make your own color combinations up. And actually tomorrow we're doing a, another tour of the warehouse so and we will be down in a crystal aisle so I will be able to show you them all. So that's it for me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope um, you know just have a go. If you have a go do put a pop a picture up even if it's just a little snippet up until one of our um, groups because I just love to see what you're making or what colors you put together or what um, combinations you come up with. The possibilities are 
quite possibly endless. Um, then it's saying, quite, question, is the red shimmer with the greeny... Sorry, I just missed the comment. Is the red shimmer with a greeny, greedy shimmer? Mm, sorry, I can't quite, quite not get that. But you could do like a red and a green um, together and that would be really, really Christmassy. So you could add even if, if even if you had one of these ones, like I'm um, just let me just pop it back down. So if even if you have the olive one, and if you pop a an extra red crystals in your basket, then you can make you can add co more colors into it and make it into the color what you really you want it to be. Right. So that's it for me today. Tomorrow we are going to have another rare hair store because you really enjoyed the last one, and I already asked Simon that um, can we have some offers on crystals and bits of pieces so um i i don't even know what he come up with or what 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 uh, he's gonna let us have but um the crystal aisle is quite big as well i mean last time when we did the warehouse store i thought like oh we're gonna go through the whole warehouse and it's gonna be like you know nice and quick we'll be done by half past and we're gonna be sitting down with a cup of tea or coffee and just sort of relax and after an hour we realize we've only done one aisle so it's gonna be there's just so much to see. There is so many different ones. Does red shimmer have green shimmer? Um, you mean the crystals, red shimmer crystals? Um, shimmer is just the finish on the top of the crystal. So it would be red or green crystal. And the, the shimmer finish is... It's not quite AB, hasn't got the Aurora Borealis finish, so haven't haven't got the rainbow look about it, but um, it's shinier than just the normal crystal itself. So we're just taking a sip of my coffee. Yeah, so tomorrow we're going to look at all the crystal aisle. So do tune in for that one because that's going to be a really good one. we got so many different shades and colours and sizes and loads of little, little different treasures and um, please do comment tomorrow that if you see something what you like that you want us to do a design with or anything else because um so then we can we know that we will do something with that sort of crystal or that shape or that color uh what you love the most because me and sarah like we, we i think we're quite good together because i keep picking up the aquas the blues and the tealy colors um, some purple more sort of this um tanzanite purpley and she keep picking up the olives the greens the beiges and more sort of the aubergine purpley color so i think we do complement each other quite nicely but um you know i, I don't think neither of us sort of touches red or, or a, a sort of particular color which might be your favorite so do let us know that if there will be a color what you see tomorrow but, or, or something you want to do something with it and uh, we will make sure the next time we design something we're going to put those in there right so see you tomorrow at 10 a.m from the warehouse we have been really busy shipping all your order rides from the weekend and the guy is still really busy down there but tomorrow we're just gonna have to close this section off me and molly just gonna close the section off don't let them in and just go through and show you all the different bits of pieces do have a lovely day um i hope you um enjoy whatever you do and the weather is holds out for you i think here is still quite sunny outside um and uh, I did feel uh, a little bit warmer this morning than it was yesterday. So I think um, we might have a nice weather today. It might hold that. Um, see you tomorrow. Keep on beading, keep on crafting and share your makes with us. Bye.